Hello, I am Rich Staver, a grazing specialist with Cornell Cooperative Extension of Shenango County, New York. And this film will be on high tensile electric fences, setting posts and corners or braces. Corners and braces use similar construction. And we have some uh, contributions from Rob DeClue and Troy Bishop. Regardless of the kind of livestock you have, whether it's dairy cattle, beef, sheep, or any kind of livestock. It is extremely critical that you take care of details, that being the setting of the posts and building strong corners. Here we have some excellent examples of a three-way corner, well built. Here's an example of another corner with uh, uh, some gates. And here's an example of a corner under construction. And we're gonna end up with a relatively poor example of a corner. That's what you don't want. Building high tensile fences is very time consuming and expensive, so we need to do it correctly right from the beginning. In pl our planning considerations, we have to keep in mind that we might be bringing machinery into these fields later on. So layout is a completely different topic, but it, does, uh, it is worth mentioning. It's also worth mentioning that in our modern fencing systems, we need large diameter posts up to five inches, and they've got to go at least three and a half feet in the ground. And you're not going to be able to achieve the results you need using hand tools and pounding all these posts by hand. One of the best ways to pound these posts is to gain, gain access to one of these hydraulic fence post pounders, which are very expensive, but several agencies uh, may have them for rent or uh, fencing contractors typically have them. Now here we will watch Troy Bishop on the uh, Knapp Farm in Cortland County, New York, operating the post pounder. There are a number of safety precautions you should follow when using one of these machines, such as wearing eye protection, ear protection, and keeping uh, animals and children away from this operation. As you can see, there's uh, some tremendous uh, weights of steel here and a lot of hydraulic pressure, and those are all potential safety hazards. Now, as Troy nears the end of the sequence of of pounding this post into the ground. You can see that uh, this post is going to be in the ground for a long time and this uh, is a much more viable way to uh, pound posts than it is by doing it by hand. So geometry says that if you can get this post in three and a half to four feet down and you can get this post in three to four feet down that from here to here, eight feet or 10 feet, you can put the rail in and you can put six strands of high tensile on it. In this kind of a system, you can read it in all the manuals. If you go to TSC, if you go to NRCS, this is a standard spec. It's, it's good, it really is. There's a video, everything, it's all good. The thing I want you to leave with today is this geometry gets a little messed up if what happens if you put the post this post at the top who does that how many fences have you seen where they do that yep does that does that mess with the geometry it, it does on a brace system Right? How about this? Mess with the geometry a little? It's better than the top, right? Or how about this? Right? Angles, angles, angles. That's what we're after. So after today, all I want you to remember is on an eight foot brace system or a 10 foot brace system or a 12 foot brace system, generally this hole will be 40 inches. In my entire 20 years of fence building, it's always been 40 inches or give or take, 42, 38. And that's, the geometry says that that's where it ought to be for it to put six strands of high tensile on it.
saying? Why is he drilling a hole? What's what's all that about? Well, you got to hold the rail up. Um, many people use you can use a bolt, right? But what happens to a bolt that's not galvanized? It rusts, right? And when it rusts and it's inside this post, what does it do? It falls down, it rots, right? So you need just as good a components as your 30 year wire. That's why you use these. They're a little more expensive, but you should buy them. You put them in, you put the wire, you put that on. Um, can you hold, I'll let you hold that. What are you going to do? Okay. So if the post is, if you, if you drill a hole 40 inches, should you drill a hole 40 inches here? Yeah, you should, shouldn't you? And then how much of a hill you In this segment, Troy makes sure that Paul and Maureen Knapp, the owners of this multi-species farm, have gotten the cross piece level. You're off kilter. So, what, someone's right, someone's wrong, someone's in the middle. Right? That rarely is the same because you have a different way of looking at the landscape, how it fits in, whether it should be a little higher or lower. And the only one that really matters is Paul and Maureen because they got to look at it for the next 30 years. So if you do it wrong, guess no. what? So I guess I should have asked before I said anything, what am, what am I looking for? Like I thought I was looking to make it parallel to the ground, am I not? Yeah. After you talked about the hill? Yeah, whatever looks good. Right, as long as it fits into the environment. We'll look from the other side and it'll be totally you can, yeah. You could get a better perspective over there maybe. Or I don't know. Or a different. Well, that's not geometry. No, it isn't geometry, but it, in the end, it, it flows with the environment. We got, we get very linear. We're human. We get linear looking. Oh, if it's 40 there, it's got to be 40 here. No, it's not the way. So you measure the first one out, and then yep. by sight and then you line sight that one in. It just needs to be turned. No, now he's gonna twist it. And now Troy will show us how to use his electric drill in a special bit in drilling the posts for the uh, galvanized pins which will brace the corner. It's a good thing I didn't bring my... So you set the post. You've built the you put the big brace wire on here. Now we gotta build the brace. It's important to note at this point that Troy leaves about an inch of that brace pin sticking out of the fence post, and that's where the tension wires will be attached. Can you reach in my box? I think my uh, players are in there. Cutters. Yellow handle? No, red. It's like wire covers. I can tell you've done this once before. <laughs>
there is a book you can buy or you can get from NRCS or your soul and water that teaches you exactly how to do that. At this point, Troy tightens the wires by hand. The purpose of the twist stick or twitch it's to tighten the wires and it will maintain the tension on uh, the two brace posts. They're off a couple of years. A little. That's exactly the way I want them. This is, to me, this is a perfect brace. Because when you go to push, pull wires on, you go to pull, you, you put six or eight wires on this, right? It's going to move a little. If it's, if it's straight, the only way it can go is crooked. All fence builders should know that if you're going to put a high tensile fence in, it's okay to lean, you got to lean the post out a little. Now, do you want it way out here like this? No. But you should, it, sh it should never be level. It's always got to lean in it. So this brings us to the end of this film on setting posts and constructing end or corner braces. We hope that the information uh, will prove useful to you in your fencing endeavors. Mm -hmm.